Hello everyone, we're back with some more Higanbana no Saku Yoroni Transcendental me the unforgiving flowers blossom in the dead of night When we last left off, um, we got Marie being like, yo, don't bully me anymore, ooh And Ozaki was like, okay, yeah, okay, this will surely end the story and the, no more bowling, yeah Bowling is now ceased And yeah, that's, that's, that's everything, it's no more bowling guys We did it, we beat the game we now live in a utopia. Get it? Get it? Get it? Anyway. Oh yeah, this is still uh, me reading it all in one night. So it's 3 a.m. right now. Um, let's get going because by the end of it, it'll be like 7. I was like he changed into an absent-minded child and he did not bully Yukari again. See? It's perfect. However, the other bullies and not changed it at all. Okay, okay. So I figured there's two directions we can go. This direction as it is now. Or it could be all there like, oh yeah, let's stop bully go, let's go bully, bully this other kid. Ha ha ha. And it's like Murray's like, no, what are you doing? And Ikari's like, I'm gonna stand up for them. But no, we're not doing that. Ozaki's not feeling so hot, so let's leave him alone. So today let's just play around with Sakaki ourselves. So in the end, the bowling Yukari experience did not change at all. I wanted to believe that just by removing Oz Ozaki, I could save Yukari. There's no way that could save her. When Ozaki's violence stopped today, that only benefited the other bullies. So in the end, what Maria done was like putting a band-aid on a cancer patient. No, it was as if night before it never happened. Lunch break. Ozaki, as if he had lost his spirit, rested his head on the desk. Across from him, excited from having getting graffiti on Rikari's desk, was the usual group of bullies. Ozaki had kept his promise to Meso Meso san. Just as he promised in the old school building bathroom, he no longer bullied Yukari Sakaki. That being said, he didn't say he would stop everyone else from bullying her. Since she didn't remember to press him on that, Marie felt a little guilty. But even if Ozaki had said that, the bullying against Yukari probably wouldn't end that easily. That's probably wishful thinking. Yukari Sakaki's abuse is amusing to all of them. It wasn't as if Ozaki was happy that his followers were following in his footsteps. Ozaki was not the only one included. Not included in the fun. In that classroom atmosphere, he watched as she was bullied. No, oh, he was the only one not included in the fun. This is as if nothing had changed. Now that I think about it, bowling has always been like that. People don't simply become bullies. The environment is where bullies are made. So taking away one bully made in that environment doesn't solve the problem. If I think back, even if the abuse I received when I was human was like that too, Oh, we haven't seen Kanamori in a while. How's, how's it going, dude? With just, with just the death of Kanamori Sensei, I thought I would be saved. He can't, he does look like a young Rudolph, though. Even if he were gone as before, I would have still been bullied by the boys in class. Now you've thought of, that becoming a Yokai and getting my revenge on my teacher would be my salvation was something I now understood all the clearer. Higamana san probably knew that. She probably knew exactly how bullying worked. That's why the fact that I believe that by warring just one bully Ozaki would solve everything was no doubt comical to her. I couldn't see her. She was probably in the shadow somewhere, watching me overcome with surprise like this and giggling. Before long, after finishing their scribbling on Yukari's desk, the ring of bullies dispersed. Their number, for the time being, was four people. I wonder if I should call each of those four people one after the other to the school at night. I just get to the point where you call everyone in the school to the school at night and be like, don't bully her. And get them a warning as Vessel Muscle Sun in the same way as they did to Ozaki. It's probably pointless. Those four might withdraw from their positions, but even if they did, other bullies would rise up and take over their roles. Besides, offering a warning as Vessel Muscle Sun to four or more humans after Ozaki, that's no easy feat. This was in accordance to Marie's circumstances as a yokai. Oh, I feel like I've heard this once before. Yokai like Maria and Higamana don't have an inexhaustible supply of power. Essentially, when Yokai place their forms in the other world, they have to exhaust that power when intervening with that world's affairs. Higamana said that this is Yoyoku. Representing a Yokai's power, Yoyoku means exactly as its characters are written. If one is a strong yokai like Higamana, it's natural that you would have a large amount of yo-yoku. 
A meager yokai like Muri naturally has a small amount of yoyoku. And if you're dealing with humans, it requires a great amount of yoyoku. In addition, it changes with how big the degree of interference is. If it is a small thing, like making someone listen to your whisper in a daydream, that only takes a small amount of yoyoku. So I know I questioned this earlier, but like, we don't need an explanation. <laughs> now, if you're thinking of showing yourself and making something see your fearsome and powerful yokai, it requires a large amount of yoyoku. When Marie appeared before Yozaku in order to give him a warning, she spent most of what little yoyoku she had to do it. There are many ways to regain that spiritual energy, such as entrusting one's body to the waxing and waning of the moon, or hunting and feasting upon the soul of a human. In the case of Marie, who refuses to hunt, the only way to replenish her yoyoku is to give, her, give it time. If she gave a warning to each of the four bullies, she probably wouldn't even be able to show herself again. She already knew that warning the four bullies alone would not save Yukari. Marie hung her head while biting her lower lip. Her powerlessness was mortifying, but that it wasn't going to save anyone. Even so, she was a yokai. I'm the one. I'm the one who could save her. I absolutely have to save Yukari Chan. I have to. But how? Then I don't know. I don't know, but I can't give up. I give up. Who will save Yukari Chan herself? And there's some. I tried to think of some quote from Fate Straight Night, but I can't think of it. Yukari went back to her classroom. She noticed the scribblings on her desk. For a moment, her expression dimmed. But then she behaved like she hadn't noticed anything and took her seat. The bullies, in reaction to her non-reaction, were grinning and clicking their tongues. But I knew. I knew how many tears she was swallowing underneath that blank expression of hers. After amusing themselves, the bullies eventually left the classroom. I followed after them. I can't just stand by and watch Yukari suffer like this. Even as I watched over her, all I could do was sympathize. If I have to protect her from that formless concept known as bullying, then I've got to get a better understanding about it. So I took interest in the bullies. By observing them, I might be able to learn something. From that day on, their shadows were thickened and slightly clad with a chill. Murray understood that this was what it meant to stalk. To haunt. Rarely, students with strong supernatural senses would occasionally feel a slight unease about them. But no one saw Murray. And so she continued her investigation of the Yukari's bowling from over the shoulders of the bullies himself. How are you doing, Marie? Well, they didn't have a space. Oh, yes, they did. Never mind. Have you found a way to save that girl? I got Mana-san. Everyone's spreading rumors about Marie Somesso-san stalking sympathetic victims, looking for her next prey. Although I'm interfering with your hunt, I figured I'd make sure you're doing it right. <laughs> Just skimmed to tease you. The Gambana had known from the start. She knew that just warning the leader of the bullies wouldn't stop their tormenting. Moreover, if she thought that Maria would despair, she patiently would wait for the other bullies to come along and surround her. It was Marie, who had the despairing experience of being tormented in life, who died and once again faced against the problem of bullying, and how she would stand up against this task. That was what Higamana was interested in. You know what people often say, right? The bullied usually deserve it, but I don't think that applies to Yukari Chan. <laughs> Is that a fact? Like, do people say that? Like, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's probably usually true, but like, what I mean is like, I've talked about this earlier. Like, when people get bullied, they usually do something that triggers it. So I'm not gonna say they deserve it, but. You get what I mean. Like, is that a saying? To be... Maybe in Japan, I guess? Is that a fact? Yes, after all, she's doing her best to keep from being bullied. Kai is trying her hardest. In order to not entertain the bullies anymore, she's stuck to ignoring everything they do. Once it was pointed out to her that they, her clothes were smelly and dirty, she realized why they started bullying her. And now she pays special attention to her hygiene. And I didn't mean to say, by the way, that like every time someone gets bullied, they did something to trigger it. Like sometimes, you know, kids are just you dudes, and they're like, "Yo, you smell bad." Let's make fun of her for a year. And now she pays special attention to her hygiene. She thought that just by bringing an end to that, there would be no more reasons to bully her. However, she already had the label of bullied girl, and it stuck to her. And thus, even though there's no connection to her present self, the torture persists. It's not like you said. Yukai-chan doesn't deserve it, Higamana-san. Then what do you think? I think the problem is on the bully's side. 
<laughs> so something like if you don't sympathize with them, you won't understand their pain? Over all these many decades since the beginning, I've heard that countless times. Well, it's not like that. A completely genuine meaning? I think there's something wrong with these boys. Huh? Please have a look. Over the classroom. Could it be that Yukari Sakaki is being surrounded by all those woolies like always? No. Yukari-chan stayed home today. She got a cold today, so she's absent. The cold is prevalent in the class. So taking an absence wasn't unexpected. Rather, it was practical. This is neither above nor below the norm. Was Sigamon is supposed to see something in this classroom with its favorite tormentee? Yukari Sakaki missing? She looked to where Maria was pointing with intrigue. Flap. Flap, flap, flap. By the curtains, they were relentlessly, violently kicking. The bullies were all gathered in one corner and kept kicking without uttering a word. It wasn't an uncommon sight to see the boys playfully beating on something in place of a punching bag. But what they were expressing wasn't playful. Hate. Frustration. Anger. Wordlessly turning those emotions into violence, they struck the curtains. This sucks. Lame. Normally they would be teasing Yukari Sakaki and playing pranks on her at her desk. But today she was absent, so they couldn't do that. They were grumbling out loud. It's as if they were grumbling because Yukari Sakaki went ahead and took the day off without asking them for permission first. Seriously, this makes me mad. It's gonna explode if I don't get a pound that Sakaki. And that girl, what? She got a cold? Seriously? Bull stuff, part of my French. <laughs> but she's not here, it's so annoying. It's like the most annoying thing ever. They said something like she had to go to the hospital. She might not come anymore. It's like, she should hurry up and come back so we can mess with her, you know? They're gonna freaking die of boredom. Freaking Sakaki part of my friend. Stupid Sakaki. You stink. Just disappear. Frick. Part of my French. While saying just disappear, the lamenting voice pouted inconsistently that Sakaki wasn't there. They took turns kicking the bunch curtains in their frustration over and over again. Oh, I know, maybe they, they like her. That's what they do. They bully the girl they like. <laughs> it's almost as if bullying is their drug. They're all addicts. Yes, I can see that too. Is there any basis to that? Or is that just some, I guess, myth that just became well said? Because if you think about it, that probably does, uh, like, you know what boys hate when they're, like, five? Girls. And what do they hate even more? Thinking people like girls. So if they bully a girl, that means, oh, you like her, which in turn means it, that's she, it's genius. <laughs> Bullying is an act of establishing hierarchy in a group-oriented society. So if you're not constantly doing that, you'll become uncertain about your own ranking. And so, people cannot stop bullying. Furthermore, aside from being creatures that run society, humans cannot escape their instinct to bully. Igamana explained her theory, but Marie didn't think that was the case. It wasn't that she naively thought that humans were different from animals. It was because of a pure unease she felt. They made bullying Yukari a habit. She was their best way of having fun. So on days when Yukari wasn't there, they should have settled for the next best thing, but they did not. While other boys did things like running around and playing with each other, all they did was hang around with curtains angrily, kicking lumps in the folds out of frustration. Clap. Clap, clap, clap. Seemingly out of frustration, they kept kicking. It wasn't because it was fun. It was as if they couldn't find any other fun to have except in bowling. Marie saw that. After all, bowling is fun. Come and make the face. Do the thing. There's a screen cap I've seen of Figamana before I even started reading it. Of I think it was Figamana being like, oh, Bowling is so much fun. Oh, 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 or something like that. So when you become a slave to that in entertainment, it starts to become addicted, wouldn't you say? Well, I think it's odd. For argument's sake, even if bowling is fun, this is only a one-time incident. For them to get this upset over being unable to bully her for one day, just because Yukari-chan is taking one day off? I think that's a little odd. It's just one day. For them to be this upset just because they can't bully a girl? It's just odd. Hmm... You think it's odd, Marie? Perhaps it's proper to say it is. 
It doesn't particularly matter to me. Perhaps I should hurry, corner your car, you and attempt to end your own life. I'll carefully boil her, mix with the secret sauce you've given her, Marie. Come become a wonderful boiled soul. That will definitely have a good taste, no? <laughs> Leaving a trail of laughter, Higamana dissolves into the shadows. But Marie wouldn't let it come to that. Because Marie couldn't see their bowling as playful, but by no means a laughing matter. Just like Higamana explained, she could see that they were only addicts for the drug that was bowling. Does bowling really have the mystical, ominous power to make people slaves like that? I don't believe that that's not it. Higamana sneered, saying that humans are not like animals and unable to escape from it. But I still wanted to believe. There's no way that humans by nature wickedly take pleasure in seeing the suffering on others' faces. Then why? Why do they keep bowling here every day? And why on days like today when she's not even here, does it bother them this much? There has to be something. A reason why they're this addicted to bowling. As long as that's not explained, perhaps Yukari can't be saved. Mary was certain of that. Oh, it's Ozaki-kun. How you doing? You turned it down for a while. Yeah. It's a cold, just a cold. You and Ozaki, you had been threatened by Marie and lost his spirits for a while. Had recently started regaining his former composure little by little. He might have even returned to normal before the end of the week. It was a terrifying experience that was hard to forget. But again, it had been menaced to the point of becoming an invalid. Invalid? What? You, you say it like in a funny way, right? What is it now? Or no? It was still an event that he didn't want to remember, but even if he told anyone, it wasn't as if anyone would be, un be able to understand him, and he did not want to be thought of as, as a coward. In other words, it shows that all of Marie's efforts that night had only the effect of distancing him from Yukari for a couple of days. But even so, this doesn't discourage Marie. In order to save Yukari, she had to understand their abnormal behavior. Marie listened quietly, with her ears at attention. She continued standing directly behind them. Sakaki's so alright. But last year. Oh yeah, I remember last year. Seriously. Put up with Sakaki, but man. It's just not as satisfying, you know? This is the second time they referred to this person. Being ignored by Sakaki makes me mad. Just makes me want to mess with her even more. Like, yeah, last year, man. That stupid girl. Why'd you have to go and die in an accident? She had heard that story before. A story seemingly about how they were... They were bullying someone last year. Story about how somehow that girl ended up dying in an accident. You know, there's nobody like her. When we messed with her, we had all sorts of fun. If we can get Sakaki upset a bit more, she might be a, be fun too. Well, Sakaki will probably never replace Misumi. Misumi. Have you heard that name before? I don't think so. It's a pretty uncommon name, so I think I'd remember it. Watching her react was tons of fun! Choo choo. Well, with every action, there's a reaction. Yeah, yeah. Same should be for bolded kids. Sakaki's gonna need a lot more discipline to reach Misumi's level. And disciplining her? That'll be fun. Exactly. After all, Misumi just kept getting better and better, didn't she? Absolutely. With Misumi, she wasn't quite messing around. How could I say it? Felt like we were playing together? Yep. No offense to Misumi, but maybe she was enjoying it too? Oh yeah, at least that's what I thought. Right, that's not bowling. I mean, Misumi was really having a good time, wasn't she? She really enjoyed it when we teased her. She really did. That gloomy old girl would have died of loneliness if we hadn't played with her, right? You bet. Just totally thrilled we played with her. Like heck she was. Nobody would be happy drinking mop water soup. <laughs> Put Misha on the screen. Hey, speaking of, you know, we never got... Any sort of thanks from Zakaki for playing with her, didn't we? We sure haven't. She totally looks like it's just a pain to do it, too. If we haven't played with her, nobody would want anything to do with such a smelly and disgusting girl like her anyway. You're right. Zakaki hasn't thanked us enough. We really gotta make her remember to do it now. Starting tomorrow, tomorrow we gotta teach her a lesson and she really gets it. So she really gets it. Yeah, gotta teach her a lesson. <laughs> Just like that, they thought Yukari had to be grateful to them for bowling her. Their words were so callous that Marie wanted to cover her ears. For a little while, the boys were laughing in high spirits. But sooner or later, they grew tired of conversation and once again appeared as displeased as ever. Till Yukari comes back to school tomorrow, they can bully her once more. Their sour mood is unlikely to change. 
Marie separated herself from the boys for a moment and reorganized her thoughts. Also, I'm calling it now. Sometime during the second. I don't think it's going to be during this, this chapter because, it, I mean, it, it could explain why it's two hours long. But sometime during second night, we're going to get a flashback episode to Misumi. I'm calling it. They dropped a name. It has to happen. Call me a genius. Marie separated herself from the boys for a moment and reorganized her thoughts. First of all, there's talk of the girl who they apparently bullied last year. The student was bullied terribly and then died in an accident. What intrigued Marie was that it seemed that all of them participated in this bullying last year. Normally, bullying is something that happens inside the same class. She had never heard of other kids from other classes specifically going out to bully someone. Then, maybe they... Everyone in the group of bullies were in the same class last year. Students at the school change classes with each new grade level. Since a single grade level has a, such a vast number of classes, it's not unusual to hardly know anyone in a new class. Because of that, it wasn't unusual for groups of students who had the same classes before to create groups. Those kids are used to being class 6. They're kind of rough. They're always picking on Sakaki-san. I even feel bad for Sakaki-san. Tehe! <laughs> Seeing the displeased looking boys, the girls could be heard whispering. Marie drew closer to the girls and listened carefully over their shoulders. Hey, did he not? Long time ago, there was a big ruckus in, the, in a neighboring class. Oh yeah, about that bullied girl? Didn't somebody tell her to go jump and kill herself or something? That she went over the railing? Crazy. <laughs> well, everyone used to be from class 6, even the bullied girls. Oh yeah, I think I heard about that. I remember that lots of bullies used to be in class 6. Didn't Sensei say it too? Something like... Why are the former class 6 kids causing nothing but trouble? I smell a yokai up, but... Oh man, why? Every single class 6 has nothing but bad kids in it? Say, do you remember? The story about the girl who fell off the roof and died being from class 6. They had to be talking about the girl named Misumi. They say her death was accidental, but it seems that the bully kids had to believe it was suicide. So is Misumi the same girl we saw from the opening of this chapter? Is the main question. I don't think so, but... Because it seems they were bullied to do so. Certainly, hearing about an accident from falling off the roof, that was strange. The roof wasn't even part of class, is, and students were prohibited access. Because, like, the time difference is too big, right? Because it seems like Murray went, like, straight to the next bully kid. And, you know, within, like, the span of, like, a day. Not, you know, the span of a year. The roof wasn't even a part of a class, is, and students were prohibited access. Even if someone went out on the roof for a time, it was surrounded by a fence that couldn't be described as short. So from there, for a careless accident to happen, like someone falling off the roof, it was really hard to imagine. Marie remembered the girl who threw herself off the roof, having been tempted to kill herself by Hagamana, not listening despite being warned that if she didn't stop, these thoughts they would risk her life. That girl also climbed up the fence of her own free will and jumped. There's no possible way that anyone could go over the fence through some careless, thoughtless mistake. Which, mean, which means, just as she thought, Misumi-san, the former class 6 victim, killed herself. Even though the roof is supposed to be off limits, there's no way she fell off by accident. Well, yeah, it's totally impossible. You know, they say that she killed herself because the bullying was so cruel. It's totally a rumor. And the school covered it up by calling it an accident. You know the dead girl? Here she was bullied by everyone in the class. By everyone? Yep. Every last one of them. She was bullied by the entire class? Marie doubted her own ears. And of course, the girl she was overhearing doubted it too. Usually when talking about bullying, it's only a couple of people. Then the majority of the class would be onlookers. Plus we might even cheer it on, but... That wouldn't count as bullying. So the entire class was actively bullying that girl? Yep. And then all of class 6 bullied her. Seriously, most of the time it was a situation where they'd all gang up on her and beat the crap out of her. Uh, looking at Ozaki Kun and the others, you get a feel for it. Like that former class 6 seriously left to bully people. Even now, since they can't bully Sakaki san, they're taking out their frustrations by kicking curtains, aren't they? Wonder if bowling is actually all that fun. Those, girl, those guys are always saying that, aren't they? Last year's girl was the best, the most incredible fun they have ever, they've ever had. They're never going to be satisfied with just Sakaki. Seriously? Bowling just because of that? How mean. Yeah, I have a feeling we're actually going to see a ghost, what, Misumi? Masu? Misumi, Misumi, right? 
the chapter now. Hearing up to that point, Marie separated herself from the girls. It's a bit painful for a yokai to face the sunlight. Entering the shadows, she once again tried piecing the puzzle together based on what she had heard. Last year, something happened in Class 6, and the children who became bullies in Class 6, they were rumored to have been scattered among all the other classes. To comprehend their persistent bowling of Yukari, she had the feeling she would have to understand what happened in Class 6 last year. Okay. Are they really just ordinary bullies? Hey, Mana and the other classmates seemed to think that. However, Marie could not accept that as the truth. She had to become more determined to investigate further. She could not figure out a method to rescue Yukari now, but she planned to do whatever it took. From that day, Marie wouldn't come to the classroom again. Just while Marie investigates, Yukari will need to withstand the bowling, and Marie could only pray that Yukari does not lend her ear to Higamana or the temptations of the other yokai. However, in a way that neither Marie nor Yukari could have ever imagined, Yukari's bowling was going to meet a sudden end. Okay. I mean, that seems like a good place to call it to me. 25 minutes is about... I said that's a normal video length. So I'll see you guys next time when we read some more Higamana. Yep, see you guys then. Bye.